a greenhouse may be an unlikely place for COVID-19 vaccine development, but it's where the scientific process starts. For all vaccines, scientists must find a way to produce an antigen, the molecule that stimulates an immune response. With Medicago's vaccine, plants produce the antigen. Robert Kozak, PhD, an assistant professor at the University of Toronto's Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiology, who is not involved in Medicago's vaccine, tells very well that the plant used in the vaccine is very susceptible to different pathogens like bacteria and viruses. This is a good thing. Ward explains that the plant produces what are called virus-like particles, VLPs, which are non-infectious. This process starts when a little bit of DNA is inserted into the plant cell to produce proteins. It's very similar to what AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines do, except they do it in the human body, Ward says. They use adenovirus to deliver a little tiny piece of DNA into our muscle cells, and then our muscle cells produce the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. With the plant-based vaccine, once the DNA is injected into the plant cell, the spike proteins move to the surface where they form VLPs. They don't contain any genetic information, so they can't replicate and they're non-infectious, Ward says. We purify those little virus-like particles, VLPs, and we inject it into your muscle with something that helps to stimulate the immune response, Ward adds. These VLPs are basically the empty shell of COVID-19, Kozak explains, which can present more antigens to your immune system. This differs from mRNA vaccines, for example, which only show your immune system the spike protein of the coronavirus. But with this, you've got the spike protein, the envelope protein, and then something called the M protein, all the things that make up the shell, Kozak says. That's actually kind of helpful because it's probably more likely to build a more robust immune response.